try and I'm Ryan and this is yeah no, that's what it is Hi, I'm Ryan, and this is my life story so far. So, I was born in 1988 in a place called Bradford in the UK. I'm now living in some of your climates in Portugal, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So, growing up as a young guy, I was a normal kind of kid. Uh, I was quite adventurous, I was cheeky, I was always up to no good. I loved everything to do with sports and fitness, even from an early age. And that become a massive part of my life. Uh, to the scale it is now, I probably obviously didn't know back then as a young guy um, what would happen in my future and what would take off. But um, I'm glad I had two parents that were big sports enthusiastic as well. My dad was a footballer. I tried the football to be honest with you, but I had two left feet. It definitely wasn't the game for me. My mum was a fitness fanatic. She was constantly running. She was doing aerobics classes, which were the in thing back then. And yeah, from a young age, being taken to football games, watching my dad play, to then going to the aerobics classes. I think I was still in my mum's belly at the time and getting bounced around. I think the, the sports, the fitness lifestyle was definitely bred into me from a younger age. I nearly forgot to mention, I'm not an only child. I do have a younger brother called Jordan. Thought I better add him in because he's going to be watching now like, you don't mention me. Hiya John, I've mentioned you. Top guy, I look forward to seeing you soon. So growing up, I tried different sports. As I said, my dad tried to take me to football. Wasn't the game for me. Uh, I tried other things. I even got taken to a dance or an acting school at one point. And we figured out that wasn't for me when within the first night I punched one of the young guys. Um, at the acting school um, so we, we, it seemed a little bit too delicate for the the kind of sports I needed to do I soon found my feet and a family friend took me to play rugby or introduced me to rugby as he played rugby league and that became a huge part of my life growing up from the age of nine I got taken to a place called Dudley Hill Rugby Club it's a fantastic amateur club back in Bradford it's produced a lot of top level professionals and from then on that was uh, well, there was no looking back for me when it came to sports and rugby was the game I was destined for as if you'd say from an early age so from the age of nine up until 16 I played amateur rugby league at Dudley Hill Rugby Club and then later moving in my later teens to West Bowling fantastic amateur club again and from there at West Bowling is where I got picked up by the Bradford Bulls, my home club professional team. I got given the opportunity at 15 to go train full-time professional with the Bradford Bulls. And at 16, when I left school, that's exactly what I did. So at 16, for a young guy who's just come out of school when all your friends are taking on jobs as mechanics, as barbers, as working in restaurants, I already had something planned out. And so sort of going through GCSEs at school, I, of course, did my best. Well, I told my parents I'd do my best, but I already knew I had something as soon as I left school where people wanted great grades and so they could get the jobs they wanted. But I was lucky enough to have been gifted as a rugby player as a young age. So, yeah, as soon as I left school, I was ready. I was set up, if you like, with a great opportunity in life in front of me. So at 16, I rolled up to the Bradford Bulls hometown club as a young boy looking up to all these professionals and thinking my future was was made and and it was it was there for the grabbings now when i started playing full-time professional uh, i still loved it in the early years and i was a very gifted kid as i say coming through the ranks i captained my county my country at school boy level and then went on to captain the under 16s the under 18s going through the ranks at the bulls and i stayed there up until the academy level where i then changed to go to another professional club which were the castleford tigers 
rugby has learned me a lot of unbelievable lessons in life um, from discipline from getting back up off the floor when you've been hit hard it's given me so many friends around the world literally probably hundreds of friends i've played in a few professional clubs now and it has definitely paved the path for where i am now and learned me a lot of very important life lessons for what i will forever and ever be grateful for so like i say rugby was my life i lived it i breathed it it was my every second thought but as i went into professional rugby even when i signed my first professional contract it was very strange that even then looking forward i never looked at it as my full-time career i always felt there was going to be something else something else i needed to do something else i needed to achieve individually now as much as i love team sports and it, and it like i say it's created the person i am today when we got beat for example playing rugby i'd sometimes take it out on me personally when there's another 12 guys on the field and if we all had a bad day we all had an input in that loss as much as we all had an impact in that win but i realized i was as an individual i like to i like to take a lot of responsibility on myself which people don't like to do i don't mind being under personal pressure and i don't mind chasing my own goals as an individual and it got to the stage in my career where i was going to training and these thoughts were going over and over in my head and i realized that i needed to make a change but at that point i didn't know what it was but i knew i needed to do something different and take a chance but you can imagine from a kid of nine years of age who's lived breathed rugby come through the schoolboy ranks to then go play with your idols people at the time the, the bradford bulls for example were the world club champions the biggest clubs in the world it was amazing and, and it was overwhelming but i've always been a, even from a young age someone who had to think on his own feet even my parents used to don't push me but persuade you to do so for example this is kind of the character i am i got sent to an old catholic school my dad was religious kind of mum not so much and all the kids at school did the early communion wanted to get closer to god and i can remember this vaguely the teachers asking us all why at school why why we wanted to be closer to god why we're going to make us all a communion and even at that age i said i don't believe in this <laughs> i've come through a catholic school my dad's taken me to church and i just said i'll believe what i'll believe in and that's kind of how i've been all my life i've always made my own decisions even even from an early age and probably got me in trouble a few times but i'm also glad i was like that i got to the point i think i'd honestly played around five years of my career pretty unhappy i loved like i say i loved i breathed i lived rugby league but i was tra traveling to training and thinking i actually don't want to do this i don't want to be here now as i say with my parents they always knew i was a little bit of a guy <laughs> from an early age you'd just choose what i wanted to do however my dad was not a pushy parent but he wanted me to do well he was a really good level footballer didn't make it himself through injuries and uh, he, he wanted me to do better than what i actually wanted to do myself at rugby and i think i played a lot of my career through wanting to impress my dad and i think there's lots of kids out there now doing the same thing and i understand it because that was me never ever will i blame my dad he's going to watch this back now we it was a bit of an upsetting time at one point as i having to tell my dad who was basically living living through his young lad wanting to push him to be successful if i'd have told my dad at the time that i'd had enough he would have supported me 100 but i didn't feel like that i felt like i had to make somebody proud and and i didn't i only had to make myself proud and my my dad like i think any parents out there are happy when their when their children are happy and i just wasn't honest with myself i wasn't honest with my parents and i got to an age where i was more than capable regardless of the decisions i made as a child and always did my own thing the rugby was something what almost trapping me within my own life 
and I think around the age of 25 or 26, I decided to tell my dad and I decided to hang up my boots. I finished my playing career at Keith Cougars, a uh, semi-professional team, with some amazing friends and some amazing memories that will last a lifetime. But if I could go back and advise the younger version of me who played five years and did something for five years of his life, what I didn't enjoy, but just because it was my life and it's what all, all I knew back then, I should have then pulled the plug a long time ago. And maybe, maybe I would have been where I am now. Maybe I wouldn't. But I'm someone who never regrets anything. I always say you don't need to regret the things you've done. You just need to learn from them. And that's definitely what I did. So people talk of significant moments in their life. Moments what change their life for the better, for the worse. Unbelievably overwhelming things that can happen. I had some of them amazing moments playing rugby, winning championships, being in one of the only professional clubs in history to go a full season unbeaten. Amazing memories, amazing things to talk about to maybe one day the grandchildren. These things are life lessons and, and things that go down in your own history, I suppose. But one of the most significant moments of my life was actually stopping the thing I loved or what I thought I loved for many years. And I think there's a lot of people probably still doing things now that they don't love. And when I made that decision, I honestly felt like a, like a, someone just released a caged bird. Um, I, I can't explain the, the, the freedom, like a huge weight being lifted off my shoulders. And my advice to anyone out there now is who's doing something they don't necessarily like, and maybe you're like me, maybe it's been something you've done all your life, and you're just like, well, that's just what I know, that's what my parents want me to do, or that's that's must be what I'm destined for. I'm just a local guy, I'm a, a, a young guy from a little town. Um I just have to go with the floor, go with what society wants me to do, but it's definitely not what you need to do. You need to change your life for you and not for anybody else. That's the most important life lesson I've ever heard. Whatever you do, do it for yourself and nobody else. Now, moving on from my life after rugby league, which was one of the best parts of my life, without doubt. Like I say, some of the people I met through that is friends that will last a lifetime. And I still love the game. But I actually don't. People ask me, do you still watch rugby? And I actually don't. <laughs> um, well, now because I'm too busy and I live in a different country and I suppose we don't have, I can watch it if I want to stream it. But I don't actually watch it because I still get the buzz when I, um, <laughs> when I watch the game. And I know for a fact, I know what I'm like. They don't really have rugby here in Portugal where I live now. But I'm the sort of guy, if I got the buzz back too much, I would just probably get a flight back and ring one of my local clubs and like, I'm going to come and play for you this weekend. <laughs> and that's how I am. If I get something in my head, um, I, I, I sometimes act rationally, sometimes unrationally, and, and I could probably see myself doing that. And I think that's a part of my life, what's in the past. However, the eager Ryan, the enthusiastic Ryan, the one who um, sometimes pops out when something comes into his mind, because it could easily get a flight back to the UK and end up playing rugby again. So it's one of the reasons I do take myself away from it. I know it's not I'm reaching back to oh, chase my career again. It would just be a, a spontaneous, silly moment. And, and I've got to try and limit them because I have quite a few of them. But usually I use them to my favour or other people's favours, as I will speak about a little bit later in this video. So my career had finished. Through my choice, uh, I got out of playing rugby league still with a full set of teeth and not too many injuries. Well, not exactly <laughs> too many injuries. I had some which are more than eye-watering. I'd love to share a photo of one of them here on YouTube, but I'm not going to be able to. But let's just say I took a, a knee once to the nether regions and uh, my testicles were literally the same size of a melon. If you don't believe me, I could probably send you it privately if you, I know you personally, but 
I think my actual testicles ended up in the Nuts magazine. One of the guys from rugby sent them in there. It's an injury you will uh, you will never see ever again in your life. And unless you've seen the photo, you still won't believe me now. But I walk in like John Wayne for at least six weeks. I was laid up uh, with, my <laughs> with my legs and uh, the little fellow was out of action for quite a while, as you can imagine with that. But back to the fighting weight now and all should be good going forward. Other injuries for rugby, broken collarbone, snapped a few things downstairs, fingers, I've got various scars around my eyes, but scars are trophies, I suppose, and it's part of the character that's built me today. So we got away from that, skate free to a certain extent. Uh, moving on, I, I knew I was enthusiastic about fitness, as I said, from an early age, and I really wanted to start testing myself in the fitness world. I was starting to personal train some friends. Where even when I was playing rugby, I was the guy who'd always stay back, train in the gym for an extra hour, two hours. I was what people would call obsessed, but I wasn't. I just wanted to always better myself and progress and keep training. I love training. That's the thing what's changed my life. Training is my drug. It's the one thing what I'd never go a day without. Okay, on rest days, I have to force myself, but it's it's an unbelievably euphoric feeling for me training and I knew I needed to do something with my life whether it's to help myself or help others and this is what it's, it's done now but at the time I wasn't sure so I decided to take my personal training exams back in the UK and I got through them and I started training some people I'm already training a few friends and once I'd done that I thought let's see what I can do with this and Myself and uh, my wife, who I've been with since I was 16, she stood by my side. I don't know how, I would put up with me for 16 minutes, never mind 16, since the age of 16. Um, we was getting married actually out here in Portugal in a place called Villamora. It was before I lived here. And what happened, some of her friends, they wanted me to get them fit, to start training them. So we were coming out to Portugal, we was going to make a full holiday of this. There was the guys, the girls in the bikinis, so the girls said, let's do a bridesmaid boot camp. So first friend, she had six bridesmaids, and that's what I did. We did a bridesmaid boot camp for the six girls. And <laughs> turned up, six girls turned up, I set up some circuit type training. We called it Smith's Fit Camp. Smith's first thing that come to my head. And yeah, start training the six girls. After the session of girls like that, that was amazing. They loved it. Some of them were training at gyms and doing their own thing, classes at various gyms. And they were like, can I bring my auntie? Can I bring my friends? Can I bring my boyfriend next week? I was like, yeah. I didn't even charge the girls at first. The week after, from six girls, I was training people outside. It was the middle of the summer in the UK. We had an amazing summer. And uh, from six people the week after, 25 people come through the gate and I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is uh, a bit strange. At the time I wasn't charging face friends, I was just doing this for fun, getting fit. And just because I love doing it like I do still now, I love fitness, I love training people. But we said, yeah, if you want to bring friends, I'll charge, I don't know, five quid, five English pounds for you Portuguese people watching this. Um, and then yeah, 25 people come through the gate the week after were like, wow, I uh, ain't quite set enough stations up for this. And it just started growing and growing. I was doing three boot camps a week. And I'm like, this could actually be a business. And within three weeks, <laughs> there was 45 people outside on horseball playing fields in Whipsey, where I used to live. And I had 45 people doing burpees in fields. So it's almost like an earthquake. I was like, how has this happened in three weeks? And I was like, this is something I need to do. The feedback, the the buzz I was getting from training people and, and, and the energy from everyone around me. This was just, it was a feeling I'd not had before. I, I got my own buzz through training, but seeing it through other people, I was like, this is, this is something I need to do. That's exactly what I did. I set up Smith's Fit Camp and I was doing the boot camps three times a week with sometimes 40 people. It's crazy. And I was doing personal training with people as well. 
and it's just took off. At the same time as doing this, now leaving rugby, I had a job. My father, he had a roofing business. I started working for him initially, but once again, working for someone was not the thing I needed to do. I set up on my own and the, the roofing business itself were great, successful, even though I hated it. Um, it wasn't for me. <laughs> as much as it was, it was great money at the time. It just wasn't for me. And I knew it was a stepping stone in my life once again, but I knew now when I wanted to stop something, I would. So I did roofing and I, and I, I made good money out of it back in England and, and it got me forward in life and it allowed me to set up and put some time into building some sort of fitness career up. So the boot camps took off. It was amazing. Three sessions a week, started doing some private personal training for I knew the roofing I was going to stop and try to build my career as a, as a personal trainer or a fitness coach or something. Still unsure, but still had vision and, and I, I seen something within my life and training people and trying to change people's lives for what I needed to do. So we figured out I didn't like roofing very much at all. Now, regardless of the money I earned, I didn't like it. And fitness was something I was going to do. I had to do it. So I started online training. So I set up Ryan Smith's fitness, which it was back then, and I was doing this on my own. And we had an opportunity to come to Portugal and we seized the opportunity. And my wife got an opportunity to work out here as a wedding planner for a company. And I spoke to a gym here in Portugal and I got an opportunity, which is amazing. We have a tie with Portugal. My parents had a place here. We come on regular holidays. We love the place, we love the sunshine. I remember sat on beaches on holiday with my wife and just constantly saying, we could live abroad. This is, this is something we could do. I could see myself living abroad. Never followed in the, the footsteps. It was never more than an idea, but trust me, when I get an idea in my head and I think it'll work, I chuck everything at it. And that's what we did. We took an opportunity. I had, we had an house back in England. Uh, we had two houses actually back in England at the time. And we got this opportunity to come work here, which for my wife sounded good. We was on less money, but we we're living in a better climate. We had a little bit of stability. My dad had a place. They were letting us rent it a bit cheaper. We had some money in the bank from England and I got this opportunity at the gym and we decided to take it. We decided to change lives when we had really good lives back home. My wife was a financial advisor. I had the roofing business, which was going great. A few guys working for me. The fitness were taking off the boot camps. But yeah, we was being good. We were doing okay. We were getting pretty successful. We bought a second house. But me being me, <laughs> I was like, that's ah, not good enough. We need to do something more. Fear's always stuck by me and she knows if I have a crazy idea in my head, she knows I'm gonna go with it and bless her heart, <laughs> she stuck by this. She took the, the chance herself and I took the opportunity as well. And we went, we moved, we sold up. We didn't just move, we didn't rent out as house. I said, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this properly and we're gonna make it work. And I literally sold up everything. I didn't even sell the roofing business, I just let it go. I had the clients back there paying good money, I let them go. And we, <laughs> we packed a suitcase and we traveled to Portugal. So we arrived in the Algarve, the sunny Algarve. What an amazing place. They're starting work with a wedding company. I'm starting work with a gym and things are going okay. Things are going okay, we're finding us feet. We do not know a single person here. And I do not speak one word of Portuguese. I've been here now five years, and I think I only speak six, and they're all bad words. But anyway, that's another story. It was pretty tough, but we was finding us feet. We had some money in the bank, but we knew we didn't have enough to survive. And we had my dad's place, which was renting, cheaper rent, but we knew we didn't have it forever. So we started work. I started doing beach boot camps. I was working for a company, not on a contract, more like a freelance. 
And what I'd been promised before I got here to live here um, by the company I was working for turned out not to be exactly what I'd been told. And the money I was earning, uh, let's just say I'd have probably earned more money trying to busk in the local town. Just sold up everything, I sold up lives basically to move to a sunnier climate with the the ambition that we we're going to work for these companies and it's going to be it's going to be awesome and not only mine turned out <laughs> not to be even a fraction of what we thought but so did Faze and probably being the over ambitious enthusiastic guy we jumped into something a little bit too early without studying or working out what was actually going to be happening and within a short space of time we realized there was cracks opening um around us and we might have made <laughs> made a mistake here to say the least so what started great um uh, from selling up as lives in england to better ourselves to to not be the same as everybody else soon was like wow uh, have we made a mistake there was cracks started happening massively within his relationship um, because we were stressed we was under pressure and we didn't really want to tell his family because we was like they wanted to, to do so well and we just wanted to act as if things were going well when there wasn't we were under stress under pressure to the point where my relationship nearly ended um, there was talks of moving back to England obviously we was we was in not the best place and like I say we did not know anybody I didn't know we come out we didn't speak the language and things started getting hard you can imagine in a place where everybody kind of speaks English in Lagos in the town I am but then you go slightly out in some of the some of the surrounding areas and people don't and your car might break which it did we had a car crash which is another story we said we survived that and we needed to fix the car and trying to do things like this where at home you make one phone call and you have 10 people who can help you here that help doesn't come the same when you don't know people i was knowing clients and, and people was helping us along the way but not enough people with certain situations so the stress the panic and and everything else set in and I had people back home when we moved saying, oh, we'll see you in a year. We had, because we've had friends that moved to Australia, different parts of the world for a year traveling. But I didn't want that. I wanted to better my life. And I was like, I do not want to fail. I do not want to fail. <sighs> and times were getting more testing. And I just said, look, this is it. Fear wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. And so what I started doing was training people that was coming to me from outside of the gym. And I was training people in the villas outside my house, sometimes inside my house if the weather was bad. But I realized that people liked me and people took to me and Portuguese people took to me and that for a, what they call a beef, <laughs> which is an English guy, really started to like me. And I don't know why, because I'm actually just a crazy idiot with talk who talks too much, but I work with passion and I love what I do and people could see that. And people started to believe in me and they trusted in me. And I started building up clients and I said to Fay, look, we're gonna take another chance here and I'm gonna leave the company. And I said, you're gonna leave the company too. Faye's a personal trainer. She's a fitness enthusiast, just like me. And I said, let's team up, let's just start PT. And she had people who were interested in training with her. She was doing a few outside of the wedding business that she was working for at the time. So we started this thing between us, training people outside. I started marketing like crazy on Facebook and I was pushing so much that I knew it would annoy people and annoy my friends because it's Ryan Smith Fitness, you, you've got to come train with us. I was trying to promote myself, I was trying to survive, I was trying to earn money. And it was every other day I was consistent and I was blagging Instagram and I was blagging Facebook with, with personal training, come and train with us, why you should train with us. And I knew a lot of people like my friends would get annoyed and they're like, Ryan, lay off. And I'm like, I'll tell you I'm not laying off because I need to survive and my life's just uh, took a real big turn here. But what I knew is that 
that person was getting annoyed by me on the other side of the camera, constantly seeing me, um, what they thought were trying to show off. And it wasn't, I was trying to build something. I knew that even there wasn't interested in PT with me. They were maybe sat at a dinner table one day and with five friends and one of them friends had gone, I could do with the train or someone that pushed me. And I knew I'd be the first person to pop in at the end. And that's why I was so consistent on social media. And I'm glad I was because it's got me to where I am now. Ryan Smith Fitness was no more. It was now Ryan and Fair, the tag team, the personal trainers, bread at takeover, the Algarve. So of course, my boss, we decided to call it RFS Fitness, Ryan and Fair Smith Fitness. So that's where RFS Fitness comes from. Some people don't realize that the boss's name is in there, but yeah, it is. Um, I just don't like to say, I don't like to say she's the boss, but she is. So we started working it out and we were getting busier and busier and things were starting to look a little bit good, a little bit brighter. There was some light at the end of the tunnel. We thought we could make this work. And we did, we pushed like crazy. I ended up doing 10 or 12 PTs a day, which is just unbelievable. Um, but I did it because I wanted to be successful. I've aged about 10 years in the last five years, but I will not regret a single session or a single hour I've put in. And RFS Fitness really started building. So the fitness business were taking off. But Faye still had a little pull in from the wedding side of things. And what she decided to do was set up on her own with the, the wedding business which has gone great and it's very successful for now. And I was about to kick on with RFS Fitness, of course, with a boss still in the background. So things are going well. I've got my own studio, then I've got a bigger studio, and I decided to start doing some challenges. I started something called the Eight Week Challenge, which I did with five of my clients here, where I was training one-on-one, -on -one. and this idea came into my head, and I told Faye that one day, then five people are going to be 20 people. They're going to be 50 people on this. And she wasn't over convinced, but I got a vision in my head. And we've just completed as, I don't know how many, maybe six within just over a year. And the last eight week challenge had 150 people on it from all around the world. And we're consecutively now filling these back to back and um, Literally, when I say clients from everywhere, I mean America, Australia, Dubai. We have took clients from all over the globe after an idea with five people. And that's one aspect of the business what grew. Something else what I did here, I like to help people, as you can probably see. I like to try change people's lives or benefit people's lives as well as my own. And it's a drug for me. And we had a friend back home whose boyfriend at the time had been diagnosed with cancer, a terminal cancer and I decided to do a crazy challenge to raise some money we raised a lot of money I think around 5,000 euros at the time and there's a place now here where I do a lot of my training I've got countless training videos there called the Camillo stairs the infamous Camillo stairs people actually ask me if they're my stairs probably not but when I die from doing too many burpees I think they might put me a plaque there sponsor me if you can do let's see so I did this crazy challenge I raised a load of money and the buzz I got was unbelievable. Raised some money for the guy and I felt amazing inside trying to help people. Another year later, I still got the buzz and there was a young guy here in Portugal, a young boy called Louis, who was still fighting his little butt off. Um, who's also got a really rare form of cancer. I was contacted by someone who knew him and I was already speaking about doing a new challenge. And I decided to do 12 hours of burpees and attempt to break a world record, which was 4,545, I believe at the time. At the time. So I had to do four, I had to beat 4,545 burpees in 12 hours. So I started training for this, to raise money for this young boy, Louis. And uh, we raised a lot, I don't know in the end, maybe 7,000, I can't remember the exact figure. And people were getting in on this from everywhere. And I was training for six, seven hours a day for some days, constantly getting doing more burpees and training like an absolute madman, running around Lagos. There's people beeping at me, cheering me on because of the big build up in social media. And on the 7th of December um, at 7 a.m., 
I decided to do, well, this decide, the challenge was set. We had the media involved, it went all over the newspapers, we got a real big backing to do this. And I set off on the attempt to break the Guinness World Record. And at 7 p.m. that same evening, I did exactly that. And I managed to do 4,777 burpees. Uh, I've just about recovered, I think, about a week ago. So two years on, the body's still hurting. But it was for an amazing cause. And this is something that's, it stuck with me. And I'm going to be doing something amazing this year as well. So now it brings up to today. We've managed to stay here five years later. So everything was going great. And then the pandemic hit, which has affected a lot of people around the world now. Um, and it's, it's so sad, it's so tragic to see. We're still in it now. We're hoping there's some light at the end of the tunnel, but let's see, see when this all happens. One thing's for certain, the world will return to normal. As when, we don't know that. And when this happened, I was forced to close my gym. At the time, I just sent on a new girl called Laura Beatrice. And things were going amazing. I just got my first employee, passing loads of clients to Laura. I was doing PTs myself. The business was growing. And then I think within a week, yeah, we got struck with a pandemic. The coronavirus took hold of us. The gym was forced to close. We couldn't work from the gym. Um, and I was, what do we do now? Just set on this new girl. Um, the gym's closed. What can we do? That night I sat up and I was thinking, and I had this idea in my head to start these live workouts. What I'm going to do on Facebook. And I was like, are people going to pay for this straight away? And I said, look, I'm going to take a chance. I spoke with Faye and I was like, I'm going to start these free workouts on Facebook. I'm going to set up a group and we're going to do free workouts. Faye's like, Ryan, you, you're not earning any money now. We've got bills to pay. Uh, my wedding business probably not going to go ahead this year with weddings. People aren't going to be allowed to travel and you want to do free workouts and earn no money. And I said, just trust me because these free workouts are going to give us more exposure. And hopefully we can help people and, and in, in the long run help herself. So we started, me and Laura, this girl committed to me. She decided five days a week to do two hour free workouts for me. She wasn't even getting paid herself. I was giving her something to help, but not what she was earning when she could do personal training in the gym. And we set off and there was a few people. We started with a group of 10, 15 and in one week, the private Facebook group just blew up and we had over a thousand members from everywhere. And I knew eventually these people got would get to know myself, would get to know Laura, and these would potentially become clients and realize how enthusiastic and passionate we was about helping people. And the live workouts now, even though the gyms have been opened back, they've closed again, but they will open again, have now become part of our lives and hundreds of other people's lives around the world. And we are still doing live workouts day after day and changing people's lives all over the world. So I took a chance and I'm the sort of guy who's not scared of taking chances and who is definitely not scared of working hard to get what he wants. I constantly push on social media, I constantly push with my clients. The same enthusiasm and passion as I do. And our first fitness within the last year has grown to where we have now 300 online clients. We have clients ready, queuing to come back to train with us in the gym. We have now four, five employees possibly within the next two weeks. And we're changing lives for people all around the world. I was going to say that RFS Fitness has grown quicker than I imagined, but it hasn't. I had this vision and, and this, this focus and this drive never to give up for many years. And in this last year, I've taken that drive and that enthusiasm to another level. Whereas quitting is not an option. And the only thing to do, which is my passion and my life, is to help as many people as I possibly can. And now my employees are doing exactly the same. And to watch my baby, my business, which we've created this between myself and Faith, grow like it has. It's just the most overwhelming, incredible feeling. But I think you have to have that vision and that passion and that drive in life to, to be successful. There's still so much we want to do. But one thing's for sure, 
I will never quit and I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to push that passion and that enthusiasm onto the people around me, whether it's my employees or my clients. And I want to create this family we have now created at RFS Fitness. We just call it a team. It's not, it's a family and it's a family what's growing and the community and the, the success we're having as a team, as a family is, is overwhelming. It's, it's something else. And I'm humbled more than you could ever imagine. We've now just released, RFS Nutrition, the supplement company, which we have just officially gone live with. And now we have another business in the pipeline, which should be starting very soon, as well as things we can't even explain because there's so much going to be going on this year. We're super excited to do it. We have the fitness retreats, which we're going to bring back this year. We had three of them full last year, not being able to go through, but they are going to happen this year because we're positive and the world is going to return to normal for us all. So that's my story so far. There's, uh, it's a small pace, but my message to everyone is just, yeah, follow your dreams. And if you're stuck doing something you don't like, change your life and take action.